Hello YouTube, my name is Tyler and hopefully this will be a reading vlog. If not, it's just a reading check-in. Uh, it's June 9th and I finished three books today. Three books, that's wild. Um, so let's talk about them. I finished reading Quilt Making by Hand by Jenny Byer. Um, I realized like a good chunk of it was like actual patterns at the end. Um, and I was a lot closer to the end than I realized. So I buckled in and finished this today. Um, it's funny <laughs> because uh, the hand quilting I am most intrigued by is English paper piecing. And in here she had this whole section about it. And it was like basically like, it is such a time suck. It's too fiddly. It's not worth your time. I hate it. <laughs> so she was not a fan of English paper piecing. And to be quite honest, this did help me realize that like there is a difference to English paper piecing and just regular hand piecing um, that I never really thought about until I was reading this. Um, I ended up giving it three stars. It was very dense. Um, I didn't find her descriptions or instructions to be particularly helpful um, or like this didn't feel like a book that I would be running out to add to my like reference collection for further quilting. Um, but I think that's mostly because she actually does like regular hand piecing and quilting um, instead of like the English paper piecing. So there's a difference that goes with that. Um, so it was just not, uh, the book geared for my type of quilting, um, but I I wouldn't have known that until I read the book. So there's that. I also finished quilt making by hand first because I was just like putting off finishing Latvona. Um, unfortunately, this was my first flop by Miss Otessa Moshveg. Uh, I gave it three stars. Um, I don't know. There's a way she writes. She's very descriptive of like bodily functions. Uh, there is a particularly <laughs> vile scene in here involving a grape. Um, and it's disgusting. It gives me like visceral like, oh. but I enjoy that about her writing. Like it usually it serves a purpose. Um, I enjoy the feeling of reading her work where I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like what? <laughs> where did you come up with that? And why did you put it on the page for another person to read? I enjoy that aspect of Otessa Moshfeg's work. However, um, the work I have read by her have in the past has focused on one particular character. So while both those books didn't really have a lot of plot, I didn't find myself reaching for plot because I was very satisfied by the internal, emotional, um, mental, world of the character we were fo focusing on. This I was just reaching, grabbing, wishing for some sort of plot because it did not focus on one single character. Um, I guess like you could say it's maybe like trying to focus on the town, the village, the kingdom of Latvona. Um, but because there were so many different perspectives throughout this book, I was not getting the emotional in-depth character um, development that would have satisfied me with a low plot book. Um, and it's not like it was totally low plot. Like there was definitely some weird ass shit going on in here, but like it just, it felt very purposeless, purposefulless, purposeless, Full. Nope. What is the... It felt very purposeless. Like, I just didn't get it. <laughs> um, like, I just... I don't know. And I got... I don't know. Like, maybe the first quarter, first third, it seemed like it was very focused on, like, the king, Merrick, and Jude, his dad. And, like, with Merrick being kind of like the main focus and then you're kind of getting like background about the kingdom from the king's perspective and background about Merrick from his dad. 
Um, but as the book went on, more and more people started getting perspectives, started getting little vignettes. There was one from the queen and then we never heard from her again. And I, I just like, I didn't get it. It didn't feel like it was furthering any purpose. <laughs> like, I don't know. So yeah, uh, there was some fucking wild parts of this, but overall, um, I'm not rushing out to buy my own copy of this like I did with my year of rest and relaxation. Um, even though I love this cover, I think this is a beautiful cover. Um, but I have no desire to ever read this again. Um, sorry, Otessa, a bit of a flop. And then the last thing I finished today, again, I read all three of these today, was the last Gideon Falls volume, which was actually just one issue, but it was like a hundred page long issue. Um, and it was my least favorite of the series. Uh, so that's a real bummer that like the high point was volume two um, and then volumes five and six were the lowest rated for me. Um, this was the first true like three star for me. Um, I'll get into a little bit of spoilers. Uh, just the main thing being like this is multiple universes. The Black Barn is kind of like the center of this multiverse um and in general i do not tend to like multiverse stuff uh especially in graphic novel form i can't really explain it like i've, I've read some spider verse comics um i remember just being so confused while reading what is it spider women which was like a lot of different multiverses spider verses within one series. I can't remember if it was one issue or one volume or a series of volumes. I can't remember but I remember being incredibly confused while reading that. Um, so like I just didn't love it and then like where it ended I didn't get it. <laughs> um, I didn't get it. I didn't find myself very satisfied with I was calling him the man who smiles in the last video but it's actually the laughing man. Um, I didn't find myself satisfied or understanding that character um yeah so uh while the I, I would say the first three volumes I really had a good time with uh, especially volume two that was my only five star read in May um and the only five star volume in the series uh, I enjoyed that first half the back half not as much got bogged down so yes uh hopefully You'll see me again later this week with some other books. Uh, fingers crossed. Greetings. It is June 12th and I have just finished reading Roughneck by Jeff Lemire. I'm gonna give this three and a half stars so it'll get rounded up to four. Um, there was nothing wrong with this graphic novel, this story. Uh, it just didn't grab me. Uh, it is about this man named Derek. He is a former hockey player um, and when he retires, leaves the game, uh, he returns to his small rural hometown and eventually his sister returns as well. Come on. And they have both had rough lives. Um, Derek is struggling with alcohol. His sister is caught up in some things. Um, and so it's kind of about their path, past and how it put them on these paths. Um, but they're reuniting and um, kind of getting past some of those things. Um, there, like I said, there wasn't anything particularly bad about this. I just, I just read it and it was fine and <laughs> I don't have a whole lot to say about it. The art is very Jeff Lemire-y. Um, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. Uh, so it'll be a four in Goodreads. Um, yeah. All right. I will talk to you later. 
Hello, it is June 13th and I just finished a book. Um, I just finished listening to Small Fry by Lisa Brennan Jobs. This is a memoir. She is the first daughter, first born child of Steve Jobs. Um, and about her troubled relationship with her father. Um, I went into this blind. Uh, someone I follow on Goodreads liked it, so I went ahead and listened to it because I was looking for a memoir. Um, I liked it. I'm also going to give it four stars. Um, there's no reason it wasn't a five. It just was a good four star read. Um, I came away from this book thinking that Steve Jobs was an asshole. Um, I have never really used Apple products, so I never fell into, like, the Steve Jobs idol worship. Um, and, you know, I'm not here to cancel the dead. Um, uh, I wouldn't say, like, this was an emo emotionally abusive relationship, uh, but he was not kind to the people in his life. Um, he was an asshole. Um, the way he both tried to push her out of his life, uh, by, like, not including her in his family publicly, uh, actively trying to de deny paternity, uh, when she was first born to get out of, like, paying child care or child support, um, the way he, like, treated her at college and, like, refused to pay for things in her and her mother's life when they were struggling and he was Steve fucking Jobs. Um, it's just like fucked. It's bad. Uh, it's not a good thing to do. Um, and then on the other side also trying to control her and like mold her and make her what he thought was a good person and how a person should act um but like in very odd ways or like demanding that she give up school activities um and things like that to like constantly be on call to babysit her younger brother because she needs to be part of the family um and the way to prove that she is part of the family is like giving up all her activities and being a babysitter on call and like never leaving the house, never doing anything um, that Steve did not explicitly tell her to do, basically. Um, so like, yeah, it sucked, man. Um, so yeah, anyways, I thought it was a good lesson. Uh, I thought it was well written. Uh, it's an interesting story. Um, yeah, four stars. Uh, I also soft DNF'd Leech today. I was really, really struggling with the writing. It's very, it's narrated in a very odd way. And it's very disorienting for me, especially because I was reading it in such small bursts. And like, I just could not figure out, was this taking place in France? There was like some weird dialect and language stuff. And I have no clue if it was French or like, if it was a made up place and then I couldn't tell if like one place was real or like imaginary and then like it jumped in perspective in weird ways uh so that there was just a lot I was struggling with um but I did put the audiobook on hold because I feel like maybe that might work for me um might make it a little easier to follow uh, because I was enjoying like the actual horror body horror elements that were going on in the beginning um, and I think it gets worse from there so I was enjoying that part but I was just struggling so much with like the actual like writing narrative device um, I was really struggling with that and it was making it hard to like, get into it um, so hopefully the audiobook will work for me all right, I will talk to y'all later. Bye. Hello, it is June 16th 
and I am currently editing this very vlog you are watching and I realized that I did not film an outro so this is the outro um I read five books I think and I DNF'd a book um it was a meh reading week it's been a meh reading time for a while now besides small fry um I am currently reading three books that I will hopefully finish soon and you will see in the next vlog. Um, I am reading The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. Um, I'm pretty sure I will have thoughts about this, so look forward to that. I know this was kind of popular in the last year, I think, when it came out, or maybe it came out more recently than this or than that, um, but I know people were talking about it about a quarter through. Um, I am listening to The White Mosque by Sophia Samatar. Um, can't say I'm loving this, but it is something to listen to while I quilt. So, yeah. Um, I'm also listening to it fairly quickly, um, two times speed. So, uh, yeah. And then the other thing I am reading is Ace. I believe I should finish this real soon. Um, really enjoying it. Um, a good read for June. Um, yeah, so that is my carryovers. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!